vintage women's sports cards. <laughs> now, the athletes today are fantastic, but what I really love are what I affectionately call the old gals. So much so that I think I have one of the best collections, the largest collections in the country. These cards range from the first cards I found, which is about the mid-1800s. They go 120 years. They have to be originally printed to be in my collection, and they have to be printed around the time that the actu athlete actually competed. Now you may wonder, how did I find these? Well, I was an athlete. I had Olympic aspirations. I loved reading about women in sports, and I even became a scholar of them by doing my master's thesis on media coverage. But I never knew these existed until I found my first one. I was yard sailing. It was 1993, and there was this woman's card, and it was surrounded by men's cards, and I thought, this is cool. She was, has infiltrated the world of male sports cards. So I started looking for others, and I got a pretty good collection of contemporary cards, but then I saw this one. This card rocked my world. <laughs> I didn't know who she was, I didn't know what she did, it didn't matter, but this card sent bubbles of excitement through my blood, and it has turned into a collection of 1,100 cards today. I call the collection Tiny Treasures, Giant Legends because these are small. These are two of my smallest ones. They're smaller, on average, smaller than the size of a credit card because they had to be fit inside of a cigarette pack. So they're known as tobacco cards. These are some of the first sports cards we know of. They're the predecessors to the cards we know of today. And most importantly, these are her grandmothers of women in sports. The treasures part of it comes from the fact that these aren't easy to find. They're rare. My collection comes from 25 different countries around the world of where they were printed. Now, the internet has made it easier to find, and auctions, internet auctions, have made it really fun, and this brings out my competitive side. So I've seen about 1,600 cards, and when I see a card I've never seen before, I go after it. I go into that auction with the attitude of, I will win. When that clock starts ticking down, my heart's racing, I have left hikes to be in Wi-Fi zones, I have left dinner parties, I am there when, to win that auction. These are also treasures of knowledge. I have learned things from these cards that I never knew before. And the biggest wow moment I ever had was when I learned there was a women's only Olympics. It happened in 1931 in Italy, and this is the card that references it. It came about because women were frustrated with the low number of sports they could compete in. And it's credited with increasing the number of sports women can, can compete in in the Olympics afterwards. These are giant legends. These are the best athletes of their day, no different than the athletes today. They were Olympians and gold medalists and world record holders, but they had to operate under their own socioeconomic norms. And this meant they weren't encouraged to play because it wasn't ladylike. They were rarely paid to play because that would jeopardize their amateur status. And as you can see, they had to abide by the fashion of the day. And in the early part of the 20th century, that was pretty constricting. Now, I want to share three stories from these cards. The first one's Hattie Stewart. She's an American boxer that cards from 1888. And it's important because of her gloves. Did you know that women boxed bare-fisted and sometimes even bare-breasted back then, just like the men? After 88, they started to adopt the rules we know today. Willie Den Oden was a Dutch swimmer, two-time Olympian, 32 and 36, gold medalist. But what's really amazing about her, she held the world record for nearly 23 years in the 100-meter freestyle. Althea Gibson, American tennis legend, broke the color barrier in women's tennis. But in the 40s and 50s, practicing was hard because tennis courts were for whites only. So she had to practice at night and in the dark sometimes. These cards have allowed me to contribute to the world of women's sports in a meaningful way. For example, a couple weeks ago, I was invited to the LPGA Founders Cup. And I got to meet two of the co-founders of the LPGA. Woo! Marilyn Smith and Shirley Spork. And they first initially asked me, immediately asked me, why don't you have a card of me? And I said, because I've never seen one. So Shirley whips out her own card, signs it on the spot. And I thought, that was just the coolest moment ever. I went home that night happy. Uh, I was exhausted, but I had that happiness I did when I was a little kid. And it's that kind of happy that you don't work for, like adults we work towards being happy. I was just happy. I knew I was in my zone. I've always had a deep passion for women's sports, and I'm so thankful for these cards for allowing me the opportunity to share it. I know I'll never be an Olympian, but that's okay, because records are meant to be broken, history's forever. And I am so thankful I can share it through these cards of their own. Thank you.